Hey guys, it's Tom here from Pro Direct Running, and in this video, we're gonna be taking a first look and giving you a wear test of an all new shoe in the Nike Trail lineup, the Nike Zagama. Now, I'm not much of a trail runner and definitely more of a fan of a fresh bit of tarmac. So in order to put the shoe through its paces properly, I've enlisted the help of Flurry, who is a professional GB orienteer and a trail running enthusiast. Now, Flurry hasn't actually seen the Nike Zagama yet, so let's go and meet him and get his first impressions of this shoe. So Flurry, you've just unboxed the Nike Zagama for the first time. What were your first impressions of the shoe? Well, my first impressions were there's a lot of midsole. I mean, it's more than I've seen in most trail shoes. Definitely the most I've ever felt in a trail shoe. Quite exciting really, because obviously it's the Zoom X phone, so excited to see whether it matches my expectations um, from running in the Alpha Flies previously. Yeah, you were saying you wear the Alpha Flies quite a lot. What exactly do you use them for in your, in your training? Um, so at the moment, I, I tend to just save them for races, although if I'm doing a hard 5K time trial effort or something along those lines, I tend to bring them out just to get that like next level of speed, um, which yeah, they just unlock every time. Yeah, and you, you're dead right. So you've got the same Zoom X foam in the Zagama. Um, the only real difference with this in comparison to the Vaporfly or the Alpha Fly is we've got a carrier foam in the midsole on the Zagama. So SR2 is, is what it's called, and it's essentially uh, a, a stabilizing foam. So you know full well how soft and bouncy Zoom X is in shoes like the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly. In a trail shoe, that could be a little bit more volatile and more prone to you know, getting ripped up from debris. So just to make it a little bit more structurally you know, integral, they've added that carrier foam to it just to, yeah, for robustness, really. Um, what did you think of the outsole? Obviously, we've got a pretty solid lug depth on here. Um, and I, I saw when you were unboxing it, you were, yeah, you were testing its rigidity. Um, what are your first thoughts on that? Yeah, no, the, one of the first things I look for in a trail shoe, especially when you're getting out on aggressive trails, is just look at the lugs. Look at the shape of them as well as like the depth. And with these, it's great. I, I mean, these lugs look deep enough for the mud. And then obviously the shape of them, these are like facing backwards and these facing forwards so I should expect quite a lot of grip whilst going downhill as well as importantly pushing on the uphills. Yeah and if we rewind a little bit obviously I mentioned in the intro of the video you are a professional orienteer you do uh, some pretty solid mileage you're at a very high level in the sport I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people myself included who don't know a massive amount about the professional world of, of orienteering It'd be great if you could give us a bit of an insight into like what an average training week looks like for you and what sort of shoes you'll use within that, that training. At like the higher levels, obviously a lot of the training is just similar to what the best runners will be doing or the best trail runners even. Um, what I tend to include a lot more in my training is just running up hills, running on rough trails and just getting in amongst a lot rougher terrain just to build that leg strength and that ankle stability so that I can have confidence going over rough terrain. And then obviously on top of that, I'm doing specific training to orienteering, which will be normally on the weekends, I'll get out into terrain with a map in hand and just either do a race or a local event or something just purely training um, by myself. But yeah, no, a lot of it is just mimicking what I see the best runners doing, what my running coaches tell me to do as well. Obviously we've, we've touched on the midsole of the Zagama and having that super responsive, soft, bouncy Zoom X foam underfoot. When we look up top at the upper, what's the most important thing to you when it comes to the upper of a shoe that you're gonna be getting off the beaten track and you know hitting the trails in? I'm, I'm instantly drawn to this quite stiff um, toe, toe face. And what I think is important is you don't wanna kick a stick or a rock and then injure your toe and that could put you out for a week. And for me, the key thing is just consistency in training and little things like that could put a slight blip in your training and can really affect your preparation for a big race. So seeing that is really reassuring, as well as I quite like this detail on the top, this sort of gator, where it's just gonna stop little things getting into 
the shoe and possibly causing a blister. Yeah, you, you touched on it perfectly. Having the additional gaiter on, on the Zagama is a, is a really nice touch. Obviously the pull tab for ease of getting it on and off. Um, and yeah, should just limit getting any of that annoying debris in, which is gonna hold you up when yeah, no one wants stones in their shoes at the end of the day, do they? The main thing I'm spotting is, I was a little concerned that with such a high stack height, it could be quite unstable, but perhaps it feels really, really rigid, really nice and stable. Um, and I mean, that outsole is like really quite wide, so. We mentioned it off camera, but with yeah. the Zagami, you've actually got a rock plate in there as well. Um, so that's gonna, yeah, enhance the, the rigidity of the shoe, make it a little bit more protective yeah. underfoot, but also just give you that bit more pop in your stride as well, because it's, it's obviously not the same as a, as a carbon plate, but it's yeah. still gonna give you that little bit more, yeah, pop in, in your stride. So now we've discussed all of the tech of the shoe and what people can look forward to on a Nike Zagama. Obviously, you've not even tried it on yet for yourself. So I guess let's, uh, let's waste no more time and get them laced up and see what you think. So, Flurry, the sun is setting behind us. You've had the Nike Zagama on your feet for a good few hours now. Um, how are you feeling about them after giving them a little test spin? They were as good as I expected. I mean, the midsole, there's a lot of it, and I felt it, to be honest. They were really like nice and comfortable on the feet. A lot, a lot of soft midsole foam, and I just, yeah, I didn't have anything sharp prod me, and I, I just felt like I could keep on running because, yeah, my legs haven't tired after that. They were just really nice, really looked after my leg. Wonderful, and we're, we're out in your, your local trails, this is where you do quite a lot of your training. How did they compare? You've obviously got a, a really nice direct comparison to the Zagama and maybe other trail shoes or road shoes that you've used in the past. What were some of the key standout features that you noticed? I mean, I. They held up really well, to be honest. I loved them, and with a lot of these trails, there's a lot of loam, and just nothing was getting into these shoes, which I really liked. No little rocks or little twigs were getting in, and then just also, just really breathable as well, the upper. And yeah, I felt just generally really comfortable in the shoes, um, and enjoyed having that extra support. Yeah, amazing, and I think, for, for yourself going forwards, like with your training in the future, how would you be using the Zagama and how would you recommend other people perhaps use the Zagama if they're thinking of picking a pair up? Yeah, I think these shoes are just quite versatile, especially for trail running. I mean, you could happily, they're light enough that you could even do races in these, some longer races, but equally, I think these are gonna be perfect for those longer runs out on the trails, when you're spending probably two hours, getting lots of height gain, going over all kinds of rough terrain. They'll just be great for training, maintaining that consistency in your training because, yeah, they're just gonna really look after the legs. So obviously, you were running fairly pedestrian, a fairly pedestrian pace for, for some of it today, but you also gave it some gas towards the end. Um, the grip on the shoe, you mentioned the lug depth before we got running in them. Did that live up to expectations? Is, you know, were you finding yourself slipping and sliding at all or was it quite a secure feeling under the grip? No, so I, I found them really nice, really quite responsive. Was able to just dig into the terrain nicely. Um, and yeah, obviously today was on dry trails and these look almost better at um, wet trails. So I'm really happy with how they performed. They felt really good and really stable underfoot, which is the main thing I asked for in a outsole. So Flory, thank you very much for taking the Nike Zagama for a spin. You're a far more worthy tester than, than myself. Yeah, no, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Wonderful. And if you're looking to get your feet in a pair of the Nike Zagama for yourself, you can do so right now at prodirectrunning.com. Thank you.